In this second half, we are going to simulate all the automotive sensors and see what the inputs do to the Speedwino. I'll run through the principle of how it works first, and then I'll show you how to make the physical circuits. Just remember, I'm not an electrical expert, so this next part might be a bit simplified. Based on my limited experience, it looks like most of the sensors run on a voltage divider principle. We basically add a voltage to two resistors, and depending on the resistor ratio, it puts a voltage out at the junction. As an example, we have 5 volts here, 0 volts here, 10k and 10k is a 1 to 1 ratio, so our voltage is exactly half, 2.5 volts. Now we'll change this to 2.5k. So the ratio is 4 to 1, and we now have 1 volt. The only difference between this and an automotive sensor is this resistor is on the Speedwino and this is the sensor on the car where the resistance value changes by some physical means like temperature or pressure or whatever. What you have to remember here is you put a voltage in and this circuit puts a voltage out and the Speedwino reads this voltage out. So basically the Mega is just sensing voltages all the time. If we look at the Speedwino schematic, we can see it here. Here is the coolant temperature sensor. Here is your first resistor. It's being fed by 5 volts, and then it goes out to the coolant sensor, which is the second resistor in that diagram, and which varies its resistance by what it's sensing. And with this voltage in and grounded through the second sensor, there's a voltage at this junction. This is just a current limiting resistor here, so don't worry about that and it's that voltage that goes to the mega. It's exactly the same in the inlet air temperature sensor. Here's your resistor. There's your inlet air temperature sensor on the car. Makes a voltage out the junction and to the CPU. We can even see the resistor here. We click on 5 volts. We can see it highlight to yellow. That's 5 volts coming in there. And you can see the output going to one of the pins which goes to your sensor. So how do we simulate the 0 to 5 volts into the Speedwino? We use a variable resistor. 5 volts on one side, ground on the other, and depending on where the wiper is on the resistor is the voltage. And that will simulate our 0 to 5 volts of the sensor. Now to simulate the other sensors. Here we have our oxygen sensor, and again that puts a voltage into the mega. If you want to simulate a narrow band, that's 0 to 1 volt, so you use your variable resistor but with 1 volt at the top. And if you want to simulate a wide band, it would be the same 0 to 5 volts on the variable resistor. The throttle position sensor is slightly different to the other three, in that it's already a variable resistor potentiometer. But again, with that one, you have to input the 5 volts into the variable resistor, ground it, and the wiper will output a voltage that goes back into the mega. Conveniently, the Speedwino has a 5 volt output. You can see it right here. Which you will use to power the actual throttle position sensor on your car. The map sensor, again, is the 0 to 5 volts, which on the real car will be powered by this 5 volt from the Speedwino. But again, you'll be using the 5 volt input into a potentiometer and the wiper outputting a voltage to the mega. We'll just take a quick look at the MPX 4250AP sensor data sheet for a quick explanation of how it works. This sensor references absolute pressure. And to do that, they put a sensor inside a chamber. And then they put this in a perfect vacuum and seal one side of it. And it's this sealed side that always references the sensor to absolute pressure. That's why when you put it in your Speedwino, you'll see it's always reading around 101 kPa when the engine's not running, because that's the atmospheric pressure all around us. Now we'll scroll up. And this is a block diagram of the sensor. We have a sensing element. 5 volts in to power this circuitry which converts the pressure to a voltage 
and that voltage is outputted through this pin out to the Speedwino. That pretty much covers the principles behind sensors and how they work. Now we'll go to a simulator circuit that I designed. I designed this complicated simulator circuit because I knew I was going to use this quite a bit. But if you're only doing a one-off test, you won't need this power regulator, trigger wave generator, provision for an UNO and Pro Mini, nor even all these LEDs because they are duplicates on the Speedwino anyway. All you really need is this section here with the five potentiometers. Again we'll start with our temperature sensors and simulating them and we'll note from earlier on that these sensors already have the first resistor and the 5 volts on the Speedwino board and that means all you need is some variable resistors to vary the resistance of that second resistor and this is exactly what we have two potentiometers connected to ground and a connection to the inlet air temperature and the coolant temperature of the Speedwino to find them just go to the wiki pick the board scroll down and it's pin 20 for inlet air temp and 19 for coolant next we have our oxygen sensor if you want to simulate a wideband sensor you need to output 0 to 5 volts to the Speedwino in this circuit we are making our 5 volts but you can connect it directly to the 5 volts of the Speedwino so the voltage comes down through here you have a jumper connector across here goes to one end of the pot, ground to the other end and the pot will output a voltage of 0 to 5 volts to the O2 pin. If you want to simulate a narrow band with its 0 to 1 volt you can still use the 5 volts but use the voltage divider with the 4 to 1 resistor ratio that we saw earlier and that'll put 1 volt here and if you follow it through and have a jumper here it'll go to the pot again and that makes a variable 0 to 1 volt out the pin to the Speedwino. You won't need my fancy 1 to 5 volt jumper setup, so just wire the voltage you want directly to the potentiometer. We go to the wiki, O2 sensor, pin 21. Next we'll cover the throttle position sensor, and again it's the 5 volt in, outputting a 0 to 5 volts on the TPS pin. Pin 22. Next is the map, and you've probably heard this before. 5 volts in to a variable resistor, outputting 0 to 5 volts to the map pin, which is pin 11. Also in this table you can see all the 5 volt supplies, and always remember you must connect the two grounds of the two circuits together for all these voltages to flow back. As a side note, if you go to the version 3 wiki, this one, you'll notice there's no table for the terminals on the board. So if you want more detail, go to the beginner's guide, scroll down, and here are the V3 terminal connections. Now that you see it's only five variable resistors, you should be able to cobble something up with a breadboard and five potentiometers. Now that you see how these sensors work and how you can substitute them, it gives you a very good insight of how the sensors work and how you should wire them up. Now let's see them in action. This is my simulator board. and If you follow the wire, it goes to my Speedwino. I'll turn the knob of the inlet air temperature. Notice how it drops and the gamma goes up, so it has to get richer. Coolant temperature, it drops, again the mixture has to get richer. Throttle position works. I can't change the map because it has an onboard map sensor. We'll change one of our gauges to lambda. We change the O2, we can go rich, we can go lean. And with my onboard trickle generator, I can change the RPM. And now you've tested all the functions of your Speedwino.